I'll tell you that once you've played in the World Series of Poker main event, you will crawl over broken glass to get there for the, every single year after that. You never want to miss it. There's nothing like it. Every year, the world's best poker players meet in Las Vegas. It's an achievement to get a seat. Ah, oh, to win it, to win it is like everybody's ambition. With one goal in mind. This is the Super Bowl, this is the Kentucky Derby, this is the pinnacle, this is the, thing, the, the event that's on top of all of the tournaments. To find out who is the best. It's like Wimbledon, you know? If, you, if, you're, a tennis, you know, if you're a tennis player, like Wimbledon's the place, you know what I mean? If you're a poker player, the World Series of Poker is the place to be. And be crowned champion of the world. You can be so calm, you can think you've seen it all in poker, but when you sit down for the World Series, if you don't get those butterflies, you're dead. At the 2004 World Series, the biggest poker tournament in history, an unbelievable 2,576 players each paid $10,000 to enter the main Texas Hold'em event, with the chance of winning a slice of the mammoth $24 million prize money. The World Series tournament is now the pinnacle of the international poker calendar and has come to represent everything that is exciting and appealing about the game. It's the one event where anybody can buy in for $10,000 and is the one event that gives you one champion who is the champion of the World Series of Poker. Brilliant move marketing wise to call it the World Series of Poker by Benny Binion when he started it way back around 1970 and they've really worked with Binion's to make this the premier poker tournament in the world. Five games were played at the inaugural World Series at the Horseshoe in 1970, and Johnny Moss won them all, becoming the first player to be named world champion. A fitting result, since Moss, along with Binion, can take most of the credit for popularizing poker in Las Vegas. The World Series tournament has been fundamental in promoting poker worldwide. The process was kick-started in 1972, when that year's series winner, Thomas Amarillo Slim, then used his victory and newfound status to win a different kind of seat on the talk show circuit. And suddenly the World Series was a household name, and there wasn't a single American who could deny the allure of becoming poker champion of the world. The World Series is hugely important to the world of poker, but it's become a kind of lucky dip, because now you have so many people playing. You see, what happened was, um, with the World Series was, for a long time, about 10, 12 years maybe, you had to ante up $10,000 to sit down. You know? And if you could ante up $10,000, there you were, you could play with the best players in the world. Um, and when, first time I, I went there, which was, what, 81, um, there were, I think, 70 odd, players with, with, with that amount of money and so you were dealing with seven hundred thousand dollars yeah it's a lot of money then it sort of gradually grew but what what somebody um, had the bright idea of playing what they call satellites so if you had a thousand bucks you sat down at the table with ten other with nine other people so there was ten thousand you paid a thousand dollars thousand and fifty and you walked away with a ten thousand dollar seat if you won it and then they had the idea of what are called super satellites where you paid two hundred dollars or a hundred dollars or whatever um, and a lot of people went in for that and then three or four got through in the early 1980s with the introduction of the preliminary satellite competitions with lower buy-ins minions prophecy began to come true and the popularity of the world series of poker soared Binion then went on to devise brand new tournament style rules as a means of keeping up the action and forcing the game to a quick and decisive conclusion. This made it possible for the poker to work not only as a live event but as a television format as well and as a result it was duly televised. 
Within a few years, tournament poker was played everywhere the game was legal and on every kitchen table across America. You see it all. I, I, I've seen, uh, we, had, we had a homeless person make the final table. Uh, we, we also saw people who were, are very wealthy uh, enter the tournament. We've seen young people, old people. Uh, poker has, has no face. I, I believe that poker is a game that anybody can play, and that's what we're seeing. In the old days, you'd, you'd see gray-haired gray guys, smoky rooms filled up, and you know, they're kind of kind of cheesy. It kind of looked really, you know, not the place that, not inviting, not the place you want to spend your whole day. At least it did for me. Uh, nowadays, you walk into a casino, a lot of the casinos are smoke-free. Uh, the air is clean. You look around and it's not gray-haired guys or bald guys. It's it's more you know a young crowd. They've got the glasses on. They've got the hat on. You know the sunglasses and all. And that's what's really, I think, the boom of poker is a much younger generation happening right now. Well, the main thing about the people that are entering the tournaments these days is that it's such a younger group of people coming in. You can see so many young young kids, I mean 21, 22, 23, 24 year old kids winning bracelets and I think that's only going to continue to grow the sport and it's just become you know a game of the young and uh, you know there's still every once in a while one of the old timers will pop in and win a bracelet which is good also you know but it's just become a young, younger game. Today Binion's legacy ranks as the oldest, largest, most prestigious and most watched gaming competition in the world and it looks set to keep on growing. It seems that no one can escape the magic of this illustrious tournament, whether tasting the action firsthand, at the table, or working behind the scenes. One hit and you're hooked. The World Series of Poker is the, the biggest poker tournament in the world. That's what makes it so special. Uh, it's been a long-standing tradition for, for many, many years, and the great players come out as well as uh, the amateur players as well. It's a tournament that you don't have to qualify for. Anybody can buy in. It's, it's every man's tournament, as they say. That's what makes it so special. But I think it's the glory of the World Series of Poker. I think the fact that you're entering in the biggest tournaments with the best players, and if you can come out on top of there, you've won that bracelet and you've you know, achieved something that very few people have and uh, a lot of people aspire to do. If you read you know, many of the bios of all the new players and, and things, they. They aspire to win bracelets. That's what everybody wants to do. The atmosphere, the history, the tradition, everybody's there. All the poker players that you know, that you admire, and you know that they're all focused on this event. This is the one event that they, they think about all year. It's the one that you really want to win. Ah, oh, the World Series special. You, you talk about the World Series when at Christmas, you know what I mean? You know now you've got four months to get your Dow together. You know, you, 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 and then you, you're looking on the internet for the, for the cheapest flights, and then you're looking for somebody who you can share a room with. That you can, and then it's not just that, it's, it's the prestige of Vegas. There's so many things to do. I mean, you can go up to the Blasio and play, play in a $500 tournament. You can go to the Plaza and play a one table satellite. You can go down to the Stardust and play a game. You can play a game in Binion's Horseshoe. You can play a game now in the Four Queens. You can play a game now in the Golden Nuggets. You, you can play games in the Mirage. You can play games all over Vegas. And, and the thing is, it's the quality of the people that are out as well. I mean, I go to Vegas and I probably know, what, four to 500 people. You, you imagine, like, you t I, travel the, I travel the length and breadth of this country. I play, I play as far away as Dundee, and I play down in Portsmouth and Southampton, and I know p players from all up and down the country. And you move on to Vegas, they're all there. I mean, me and Rory Liff, we are married to the bar when we get there. Every night we meet up at a certain place, and we're there, and we have a few drinks, and we have a, the crack. And, and that's, the, that's, that's also the other side of it. But the thing is, the winning in Vegas is the bonus. But I don't, I don't, I don't set my stall out for the first two weeks to, 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 to drink. I just get my dough, get my seat for the World Series and all the tournaments I want to play in and make sure that I've won. And then I can start having my little bit of luxury.